Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ron and today we are going to be going over the best overclocks for each of Driller's weapons in my own opinion. So we're going to be talking about the primaries first, then going over the secondaries and kind of discussing all of the things that could be considered the best because Driller has a lot of really good overclocks. First up we have the flamethrower and for the best overclock I would personally pick the sticky fuel flamethrower. This one is pretty good. You lose out on tank size, you lose out on mag size, but you get much longer flame duration on your sticky flames so they can sit on the ground for a very long time, even more so if you want to build more into sticky flames. And you can offset that fuel slash tank size with some of your other mods. There are a lot of really good ones for this though. You could go with face melter, which gives you a ton of extra damage, but shortens your reach. I could also see a lot of people picking compact V valves because compact V valves is also really good. It takes you a very long time for you to run out of fuel when using that because you get increased tank size and increased overall ammo. It also makes the builds super flexible too. Flamethrower, like quite a few of the weapons in this game, does not have any bad overclocks. All of them are good. Next up, we have Cryo Cannon, and for Cryo Cannon, I doubt this one's going to be a surprise to most people. This is going with Tune Cooler. This one, again, pretty straightforward overclock, but it is really nice. You get increased freezing speed, and you have slightly faster flow rate, so a little bit more, uh, I guess, damage per second. I guess it is damage per second, but also faster freezing that way. Downsides are your pressure gain rate is worse than it otherwise would be and your charge up is a little bit longer so the charge up delay is the only annoying thing at least here for me you can definitely work with it i usually take the faster charge up in tier one just so that i don't have to deal with it as much but if you don't want that and you just want even more freezing then you can definitely take the extra freeze in tier one again cryo cannon has some pretty good overclocks though it's clean one with the improved thermals is quite nice ice storm is really strong on certain mission types but you can run through ammo with it pretty fast it's kind of like if you wanted to use the flamethrower but you wanted the ice status effect that's sort of what Ice Storm does, or maybe, you, or maybe you're a real big fan of like Face Melter and you want the Ice equivalent to it, Ice Storm would be the way to go. Ice Spear and Snowball are also super fun. You can use your Cryo Cannon mostly the same that you otherwise would, but now you get an additional layer on top of that where you can shoot out an Ice Spear, which does super high damage, but takes a lot of ammo. Or you can shoot out a Snowball, which is great for crowds and is really good on Mactera missions. It's incredibly strong on them. Or uh, Swarmageddon. Swarmageddon, it definitely destroys them as well. Moving on to the Corrosive Sludge Pump. For the best overclock, I would pick Volatile Impact Mixture. This one's by a very narrow margin though. It was either this or it was Disperser Compound. Both are really good, but both of them work quite a bit differently. Volatile Impact Mixture gives you a hefty amount of damage increase to the Sludge Pump, which is already hitting fairly hard. Since the Sludge Pump was buffed in the last update, you already have the Acid or the uh, Armor Eating Ability on it, which is even better for an overclock like this. This one also got buffed for some weird reason. This one was already really good. Both your Charge Shot Splash Damage and your Regular Damage is increased. This makes it really effective for just killing regular enemies. However, your Puddle Duration is lowered as well as the damage over time from those Puddles. So you won't have the same amount of consistent or, I guess, prolonged crowd control that you otherwise would with something like Disperser Compound. Uh, but you do have a lot more upfront damage for just hitting normal enemies, and it's really good on any of the missions that you're finding, like Dreadnoughts, Oppressors, Praetorians, whatever. You can just shoot it directly at them. You don't, you don't have to worry about hitting them in the weak spot. Like I said, Disperser Compound is a close second, though. Disperser Compound is really good. It gives you extra charge fragments, uh, extra fragment damage, and extra fragment count, but reduces your charge shot damage. This is good for very prolonged amounts of damage because you can spread this out over a large area. Charge shots are definitely your best friends with this. It makes it super easy for you to hold the area, especially with teammates, and even more so if you have fire with those teammates on just on anything. So fire bolts, um, fire minigun, fire hurricane. All of that helps a lot because you can light all the sludge on fire, everything's burning, you're dealing even more damage, you're slowing things down, you're eating their armor. Really helps in a team setting. And it also makes certain objectives really easy because you can just kind of cover like a uh, hacking pod or cover... Uh, Doretta, at least the area around Doretta, in Sludge very easy and makes it so everything is much slower actually getting to her and attacking them. There are a couple other ones that are pretty great here too. Hydrogen Ion Additive is a really good one. Just a straight bonus. Uh, it's a really nice clean overclock. Sludge Blast has gotten a huge buff since the last update and it is really fun. It's really good on like Dreadnought missions. And then we'll move on to Driller Secondary. The first up we got the trusty Sabata 120. This pistol has some interesting overclocks. Arguably I would say it has two of the weaker overclocks but it has some pretty good ones too. My pick for best overclock would go to Explosive Reload. If it was most fun overclock, it'd probably go to the Automatic Fire because that one's a lot more fun than this one. This one is just pretty good though. What Explosive Reload does is give you embedded detonators. If you're familiar with Scout's embedded detonators, it works the exact same just with Driller's Pistol. So you lose out on mag size, you lose out on overall ammo uh, by quite a bit, but every time that you need to reload your gun after you've shot it into an enemy, 
You go to reload, those detonators explode inside the enemy, dealing really high damage to them. It makes it so you can consistently clear up big enemies fairly fast with Driller, uh, which is really great on things like uh, escort missions where you have all the flying rocks. An explosive reload with the Sabata takes out the rocks super fast, where otherwise Driller kind of has some issues with the rocks because you don't have the most amount of burst damage, at least consistent burst damage. Yeah, you got your axes, maybe you got Ice Spear. Uh, maybe even got volatile impact, which in that case you're probably okay, but explosive reload does make it so you have pretty consistent damage. Again, downside, you have less ammo, you have less mag size, mag size isn't a huge deal, ammo kinda is, just build it all for ammo, don't worry about the damage. You're gonna be doing so much damage from the explosives that adding any regular damage to the spot, it really doesn't matter. Now, as I said, most fun overclock, probably go to automatic fire. I think it's probably a lot of people's favorites for the Sabata, turns it into a submachine gun. It's pretty fun. Maybe not the most necessary, nor is it super strong or anything, but it is just really nice to have and really fun to use. I could also see people picking tranquilizer rounds. Tranquilizer rounds does have the longest stun in the game, coming in at a whopping six seconds. Downsides are that you get less mag size, less rate of fire. Mag size, not a big deal. Rate of fire does feel a little bit slow, but it's manageable. All right, up next we have the EPC, and the EPC probably has some of the strangest overclocks. The EPC is probably one of the strangest weapons in the game in general because it can be built so many different ways. For best overclock, I think I would pick Persistent Plasma. I could see a strong argument for energy rerouting though too because energy rerouting is super. So with my pick of Persistent Plasma, what this does is after you use a charge shot um, and this charge shot explodes, it has plasma going all around it, similar to Plasma Trail with the Breach Cutter. This deals damage to all enemies walking through it as well as it slows all enemies in it. Downsides of Persistent Plasma are that you lose out on charge shot damage and charge shot area damage. That doesn't really matter that much because the damage you lose is neglectable, especially considering the amount of damage you're probably going to rack up just from enemies walking through the plasma as it sits there. The plasma sits there for quite a while, I think it's like 5 or 6 seconds. Oh no, I actually have it pulled up, it's 7.5 seconds, so it's even longer than that. And with Persistent Plasma, with the only downside being the damage, as long as you're using charge shots or even just normal shots since it doesn't affect your damage with normal shots, you can build this really however you'd like. Usually I build it for EPC mining, but there's nothing stopping you from doing direct damage or from doing like flying nightmare to deal with a lot of smaller enemies. Like I said, second option would definitely be energy rerouting. Energy rerouting is a clean overclock. It gives you 50% faster charge speed, which is super nice for the EPC, especially if you want to practice uh, EPC mining. The other upside it has is just extra ammo. Really good for any EPC build. And uh, it's super flexible because there is no downside with it. I could also see people arguing Heavy Hitter up here. Heavy Hitter is a pretty great overclock. Or even potentially Heat Pipe. Heavy Hitter gives you a pretty straightforward overclock. You just deal high damage when shooting it regularly. It's probably the most straightforward overclock for the EPC if you just want a straightforward plasma gun build. Heat Pipe is the most ammo efficient build that you can potentially have with the EPC. So if you're using it for particularly mining, then it is really good but it comes at the cost of being super difficult to use. It's got, it's got the most finicky way to use it because it can overcharge your gun super fast, so it does take a lot of getting used to. Then we move on to our final secondary for Driller, and this is the Wave Cooker. For Overclock, as the best overclock, this one's kind of hard to pick too. The Wave Cooker has really nothing but good overclocks. They are all pretty solid. My choice is probably going to go to Gamma Contamination. This one's pretty good. The radiation damage you get from it is surprisingly good. It does a lot of damage over time and it can spread to multiple enemies. Um, what this one does is give you a chance to irradiate enemies. The radiation sits on the enemy for a surprisingly long time. It's seven seconds. So the radiation deals damage to all enemies, slows all enemies, and deals damage to all enemies that the enemy that is irradiated walks around. This lasts for seven seconds. Lasts a pretty long time. You can get quite a bit of value out of this, especially for the downsides being that your shot width is less, which isn't a huge deal if you're just trying to put this on specific enemies. It's less useful if you like using the wave cooker for multiple enemies. In that case, there is quite a few other overclocks that would probably take precedent over that. You're usually using that in like a temperature build or you're just using it to clear up like jellyfish or swarmers or something. Other downsides are you lose out on damage a little bit, but you'll make up for that with the radiation pretty easily. And you also lose out on mag size. That one does kind of hurt, but you can offset it with certain mods. Other options I could definitely see here uh, being argued for the wave cooker. Blistering necrosis is really good. You can overheat your gun a little bit faster than you otherwise would, and it takes longer for it to cool down. But putting blisters on enemies is pretty strong, especially now that it's actually working correctly. Uh, you can actually put this on just about everything. The other day I learned that you can put it on the Omen Tower too, which I wasn't aware that you could do that. Mega Power Supply and Diffusion Ray would also be great options here. Diffusion Ray lets you pen multiple enemies um, for very little in exchange for it. It's great on uh, temperature builds, so if you're running Sticky Flames Flamethrower, Toon Cooler, Cryo Cannon, both of those are really good with this. Mega Power Supply is another great option. Tons more ammo, more rate of fire, 
less cooling and you get a longer overheat, but as so long as you're managing your cooling and not overheating your gun that much, shouldn't be an issue for you. And it's just a big bonus there. Very flexible too. Uh, overall, Driller has some really good overclocks. Tell me what your favorites are down in the comments below. Which ones you would pick for each of the weapons. I'm really interested to hear that. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the worst Driller overclocks. That one's going to be difficult like Engineers was where Driller is not lacking in most of their weapons in terms of overclocks. It has a few, but not that many. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos just like this. If you'd like to be a part of that, you can. There are links down in the description of this video. Thanks to everybody who does that. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.